So going back to implicit differentiation and the tangent line problem, they're asked to find dy dx, then evaluate the derivative at the given point. I know you guys are in AP Calculus, so what I'm, I guess, I'm trying to get to is, is that on the exam, they're not going to say um, what your textbook might say, which is use implicit differentiation to find. But they're going to give you this function, and maybe the function looks like this one equals 4xy plus 1. And they're going to say at the point, maybe 2, 1. So from here, what I'm hoping that I'm going to help you with is to, is to recognize that this is an implicit differentiation problem. And there are lots of ways to do it. In this first video I'm going to do on this, I'm going to just walk you through it the best that I can. In the second video, and I'm going to go ahead and attach in my, somewhere either at the end of the video or in my description line, the link to the follow-up video. I'm going to show you how to do this same problem on your CAS calculator, your TI Inspire CAS, um, because you may or may not be allowed to use your calculator on the ex on this part of the exam. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and find this derivative here. Remember that hopefully what we're saying is when we see this, we know that this is going to be done implicitly. Okay, so I'm going to declare here that I'm going to take ddx of this thing, and then I'm going to start doing that. So I'm going to take ddx of x cubed plus ddx of y cubed is equal to ddx of 4xy plus ddx of 1. <clears throat> From here, start differentiating. So I know what the first derivative of x cubed is. The first derivative of x cubed is actually 3x squared, isn't it? And over here, I know that the first derivative of 1 is 0, isn't it? From here, it gets a little dicier. And what I'm asking you now is to look at this thing as if it was a chain rule problem, right? So let the outside function be this one, right? Remember, the chain rule, the chain rule is, let's skip over here a second. The chain rule says that we're going to take f, sorry, f prime g of x times g prime at x. Remember, so this part right here is the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. So going back, we should hopefully be able to see that the derivative of the outside function here is 3. This thing squared, right? So, and what we do here is we just replace the inside piece right here with what it was in there, right? Because this is just a derivative of the outside. Now we want the derivative of the inside. So we're asking ourselves, what is the first derivative of y? Well, the first derivative of y is dy dx. All right? And then we're going to do the same thing over here. And just take a look at this real, whoops, take a look at this really quickly. And hopefully we can recognize pretty, uh, pretty easily that this is a product rule problem, isn't it, over here? So this is product rule. And I'm going to just take use the product rule here. Remember, it's me, so I'm always going to make a list. So I'm going to say f of x is equal to 4x. f prime at x is equal to 4. g of x is equal to y. And the first derivative of y we're, t we're talking about is dy dx, right? And then I'm going to put this thing together. So this derivative right here is going to look like this. It's going to be, right, it's f of x, so it's 4x times this dy times dy, right, plus y times the first derivative of f of x, which is 4, so we get 4x here. Is that making sense, I hope? All right, this is starting to look a little bit messy. So this is what I'm going to do now. Move all terms containing dy to one side, containing dy dx to one side. What side? It doesn't matter. I'm going to move it all to the left, I think. So I'm going to get 3y squared dy dx. I'm going to move this one. This was positive, so I'll move it over as negative minus 4x dy dx. <clears throat> I'm going to move all the other terms over the other way. So here we have this is positive, so I'll move it over as negative, so negative 3x squared plus this 4y right here, so plus that 4y. Hopefully that's making sense. And then I'm hoping that what you, you'll notice here is that they have a greatest common factor, right? They have a greatest common factor of d 
dy, right? So I'm sorry, dy dx. So this has a dy dx. This has a dy dx. So I'm going to factor it out. So factor out dy dx. So here's my dy dx. dy dx times 3y squared minus 4x. And if I distributed this dy dx back in, I'd get all this crap back, wouldn't I? It's equal to negative 3x squared plus 4y. Now, remember, our goal is to get dy dx, right? That was our goal at the beginning. So what would you do? You divide by this. You can say this, that dy dx is equal to negative 3x squared plus 4y all over 3y squared minus 4x. And there's some algebra we can do here this lead coefficient, we could factor out a negative 1 here and, and clean all this up. Um, <clears throat> but we don't have to. And remember, we wanted slope of line tangent at the point 2, 1, didn't we? So what we do here is that we just fill this in, right? We'd say that that is negative 3 times 2 plus 4 times 1 x is 2, y is 1, that's all I'm doing is filling in the blanks here, and then get 3 times y is 1 squared minus 4, x is 2, so we get this is negative 6, negative 6 plus 4 is equal to negative 2 over Oops, that's what happened. I was like, that's not working good. Working well. Squared, right? So this is 4, negative 12. This is negative 8, right? Negative 8, sorry. Negative 8. This is 3. Three minus 8 is negative 5. So the slope of our line tangent is 8 fifths. All right? So I hope this is helping with, with implicit differentiation. I want you to remember that when you see it on the exam, they're not going to ask you. They're not going to say, please use implicit differentiation. They're going to they're gonna assume onto you that you're figuring this out. And you have to be able to look at the contextual clues to realize that when we start way up here, that if we're trying to find dy dx of this thing, that it has to be done implicitly, right? My, my challenge to you would be separate this thing so you can solve it in just terms of a single y. And I, I think that would kind of demonstrate the point here. So that's what we're doing. I think this is going to work really well. Also, remember, goes to the tangent line problem. Also, please remember that I'm going to do another video. Same problem, but I'm going to do it on the CAS calculator, on the TI Inspire CAS. So thanks for all the support. If you haven't um, subscribed to my channel yet, will you please consider subscribing? I appreciate the support. Oh, look, that's what we're going to do next, you guys.